Okay, happy Purim, everybody. The little delayed chitas today in the morning. Oh, the reading of the Megillah took some time, and the celebration it continues. But you got to learn chitas of the day. You can't forget to learn the chitas of the day. Today is Friday, the 14th day of Adar. Happy Purim, everybody. We are holding the sixth part of the portion of Ata uh, Tutsave. And uh, we are holding on chapter 29, verse 38. And this is what you shall offer upon the altar. Lambs in their first year. Two days continuously. Verse 39. The, lamb, the one lamb shall be offered up in the morning. And the second lamb shall be offered in the afternoon. And that is basically the shacharit, uh, we dive in shacharit in the morning, and we dive in mincha in the afternoon, is corresponding to these two offerings that was offered every day in the morning and the afternoon. Verse 40, we saw in sailors below the Bashem, and then you take one tenth of fine flour. And you mix it thoroughly with oil. A quarter of thin crushed olive oil. And an libation of one quarter of a, of a hin. A hin is an amount, Torah amount. Yayin of wine. For one lamb, for each lamb, had this flour and oil and wine. <clears throat> so now she says a tenth of an ephah is the volume of 43 and one-fifth of an egg. So we take 43 eggs, you crack, you put 43 egg, cracked eggs into a, into a bowl, you can figure out how much the volume would be today. What would it be? But shaman, so now she's a crush is not stated as being an obligation, but simply to make acceptable. We want to have it crushed. Uh, that should be to be able to mix well with the flour. Um, a quarter of a hin is three lugs. Um, uh, Nesach is for the basin, as we said in Tractic Sukkah, two silver basins were on top of the altar where they were perforated like two fine nostrils. The koyin would pour the wine into these basins and it would flow through the nostrils. So you had a beautiful basin that a hole on the bottom and the wine and the oil will flow through these nostrils and they descend to the foundation of the Mizbeach and into the ground. Verse 41. So that's in general the libations. When it says you shall pour libations of wine, and there was an Ansukas water. Uh, they were poured into this, into these basins that were at the on top of the temp, on top of the Mizbeach, and it would go into the ground. Verse 41. I can't it the same thing you did in the morning, it did in the afternoon. According to the meal offering of the morning and its libations, Ta'asallah, you do for the afternoon. For a firing offering to the Lord. So she says, this is stated regarding the meal offering. For the meal offering and of libations is entirely burnt. And order to this as, as, and, and the order of the sacrifice is first the limbs of the burnt offering, then afterwards a meal offering, and then that's the way it was done. So it was brought up Ladeh Nachayach as a total burnt offering. Verse 42. Oilas Tamid, this is a oila burnt offering. When it says oila, it means it goes continue, it goes up totally. That's why it's called a burnt offering. The Dereisechem burnt means that it was totally burnt. The Dereisechem for your generations. Pesach Ayel Mered at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Fnei Hashem before God. Ashivoy Lechem Shama, which I am going to arrange a meeting with you there. The Dabre Lecha. Which comes some, which come, I will come and I speak to you there. So now she says, Tomid, what means continuously in this verse? Daily. Doesn't mean Tomid to get to bring constantly a sacrifice. It means daily. Daily in the morning, 
and daily in the afternoon. I mean, and without without a day intervening, every day, even on Shabbos, they brought a Talmud in the morning and a Talmud in the afternoon. Where will, will, will I will arrange a meeting with you, when I arrange a time to speak to you, I'll arrange it to come from there. Some of our rabbis derived from here that since the time the Mishkan was erected, the Holy One, blessed be He, spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu from above the copper altar. Others will ever say that He spoke to Moshe from the ark cover. As it says, I'll speak to you from the top of the co- up, ark cover. And we'll arrange a meeting for you. Stated here is not stated about the altar, but about the tent of meeting, as it mentioned in the verse. So the question is exactly where was Moshe Rabbeinu, where the voice came from, is what the arguments of these two sages. Verse 43. And I'll arrange a meeting with you, I will come reveal to you, and I'll sanctify you with my glory. So now she says, I'll arrange a meeting, I'll arrange it to speak with them, the children of Israel, as a king who arranges a place to speak with his servants. And I will sanctify the Mishkan with my glory. How is that? How do we how does that happen? So that says that my shechina will dwell in it. In the Medrashav, it says, do not be bechvaide with my honored ones. Here he hints to Moshe Rabbeinu about the deaths of Aaron's sons on the day the Mishkan was erected. This is what Moshe meant when he said, this is what the Lord, when Moshe meant when he spoke to his brother. This is what the Lord spoke saying, with those close to me, I will be sanctified. Because God said, I'm going to sanctify those who are going to honor me and those who are the two sons of Adam. Which we'll learn later. Verse 43. And you'll sanctify the tent of meeting and the altar and Aaron and his sons. You will sanctify to serve me. Verse 45. I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel. I'll be to them for a God. Verse 46. They will know that I am God, the Lord who took you out of Egypt. To dwell in their midst. I am God, their God. And as she said, I took you out of Egypt, so I would dwell in your midst. And now we go to the Tanya of the day. So the Alter Rebbe continues. Today's Tanya, the 14th day of month. To know with the meaning what the Zohar says, that the patriarchs are the divine chariot of God. What does that mean, that they were divine chariots? What did the Zohar mean by that? Throughout their lives, they never ceased momentarily. They never ceased momentarily to to uh, bind from binding their mind and uh, to the master of the unit to connect to God. The bit on this with that affirmation, absolute surrender. Yehudi is what I'm talking about. If you want to know an analogy, an example of a per, of people who had that bitter, who had the nullification to the oneness of God, to bring godness to the world. That is a story of the patriarchs and the matriarchs. And after that, call on the view of the prophets. Each prophet, according to the capability of the, the, the level of their soul and the capability of their understanding. The greatest prophet, and the greatest teacher of all time is Meshla Bain. goes upon all of us. All of Shechina, as it says, Shechina medaber is mitter kreinu shol Meshe. The Shechina spoke through the throat of Meshla Bain, because Meshla Bainu became like totally bottled, totally nullified to God. Ains as ochis over my my sign and experience of that. The entire Jewish nation merited to have that bittle, that nullification at Mount Sinai. They received that nullification to be able to be nullified. But the, the Jewish people, regular Jews, they couldn't handle that bittle. 
as our sages said, the Chayil of Racha, our sage of Lesson Memory said, she called Dibur Pachan Ishmasam, that in every word the soul passed away. Shu in your bitum that's what I mean. They were totally nullified again, like the sons of Aaron. Also, the same example. They gave themselves over to God that they died. That's why the Abish just said to them, Last is Mishkan. You know what? The only way you can be able to receive godliness is to make a Mishkan, to make a dwelling place for me in this world through a physical reality, through a Mishkan, through a building. In this Mishkan will be the holy to the presence of God. Which in the Mishkan was the revelation of the oneness of God. As I'll explain later. When the temple was destroyed, we're living right 2,000 years without a temple. The where does God reside? So the Gemara says, The the God resides in the simple, basic law of the Jewish, of, of the Torah. Why? Because the Torah and its laws are the will of God and the wisdom of God, which is connected to that Allah. And therefore, therefore, after one meditates deeply, according to his ability, with the, the subject of to nullify yourself, Zeus Yosef Alibek. This is what he should, his heart shall follow. follow. Think about how to break yourself, how to nullify yourself, how to commit yourself, how to unite yourself, and how do you think about it as follows. Can be used, caught in sickly, the capacity of my intelligence. And the root of the soul's root is, is too limited. How am I going to be able to have great revelations? I'm not capable. I'm very limited in my revelations. Of course, I'm a limited individual. I, my capacity of my, my knowledge is very small. I should become a chariot. And the abode of God, the one of God, is impossible for me. Why? Because my thought cannot grasp and apprehend his unity in all with any degree of comprehension, this world, I have just a limited amount of knowledge. I don't even have a, even a drop, a percent I don't have of the understanding of, of the patriarchs and the matriarchs and the understanding of the prophets. I'm very, very limited. Everybody can come to their conclusion how much of an understanding they have in Torah. But nevertheless, whether I understand or don't understand, Elizois, SLA Mishkan, I'm going to do what is right. I understand. I don't understand. Torah says I should do something. I'm going to do it. I might not have the greatest understanding. I might not have the deepest spiritual connection to it, but this is what the Torah wants me to do. So today is Purim. I'm going to hear the Megillah. I'm going to give Shalach Manas. I'm going to give Matanus Lavon. I'm going to have a Suda. I'm going to follow. I'm going to be committed, whether I comprehend it or not. I'm going to do it according to, I'm going to learn Torah according to my capability of fixed times by day and by night. As a stipulation by the law governed, even the Jewish law, not everybody is obligated to learn Torah the same amount. So a student, you should need to learn Torah many hours. A businessman, self cannot learn many hours. person that don't have the capability, the mind capability, to be able to learn. So then learn 10 minutes a day in the morning and 10 minutes at night. Whatever you're capable, make it a, make it a, a calculation. What am I capable of doing? And if once you make that commitment, and you say, you know what, I'm going to learn every day, 10 minutes in the morning. I'm going to learn every night, 10 minutes a night. Now be happy. Be happy with your commitment. He should be happy, he should be rejoiceful, and he should be glad. On the amount of time, on the portion that he's giving to God.
to the learning of Torah. And thank the great fortune. Is he giving it like a great sage? No. Is he giving it even like a, a Torah student? No. He's giving it what he is capable of doing. In meriting to be a host for the Almighty. By the Abish, there's no time. It's not about the quantity, it's the quality. And therefore, if I put away, if a businessman puts away 10 minutes and it's really quality time, my friend Abish is very happy. He doesn't go in time. But my name, if you do it twice a day, as I said, as, as the halacha tells you, you need to learn in the morning and learn in the afternoon. Take it a minute a day, whatever is capable. The ace of Nishalay, again, according to the extent he is available time, not somebody else's available time, my available time, your available time, according to the capacity which God granted him. And that's what you should do, my friend. Not, you should do more, but surely not less. So if you can learn 10 minutes a day, yeah, maybe once in a while, do, do 11 minutes a day. But don't do nine minutes a day if you can do 10 minutes a day. And that's the completion of the Tanya of today. Today is the 14th day of the month. Happy Purim, you can say it again. Today is the 14th day of the month, which is uh, chapter 80, I'm sorry, 72, chapter 72, 73, 74, 75 and 76. So from 72 to 76, you've done chitas today. I wish you a happy, wonderful, healthy Purim, as we say on the, in the Megillah, La Yehudim, Haisa, Aira, Vesimcha, Vesasimikar, and to the Jewish nation was light, happiness, joy, and gladness. I hope that each and every one of you in your homes today are happy glad, satisfied, sit down, have a suda, have a meal today, and celebrate, whether you're with others, whether you by yourself. Make a party in your house. Make a celebration. God bless you. Happy Purim and a wonderful Shabbos. We'll continue the chitas on Sunday morning with a new portion. Have a wonderful, beautiful Shabbos. Happy Purim again. God bless you all.